to continue on our topic of the inflammation, the the chemical, the chemical mediators of inflammation, we've talked about um, cell derived um, chemicals, and now we are going to switch our focus to plasma protein derived mediators. And remember that you know in the cell derived chemicals you have a, a cell here and we kind of talked about all the chemicals that are kind of a part of the inflammation response that come from chemicals. Now we're going to talk about all the all the uh, plasma protein derived mediators of the inflammation. So you know this is a a blood vessel and inside the blood vessel there's little proteins there's a lot of stuff inside your blood but part of that is these little proteins and these are the plasma protein derived mediators and of those the plasma protein derived mediators we're going to talk about the complement system the kinin system and the coagulation system now, the, these are not exclusive to the inflammation system, uh, just the inflammation response, but they play a part in the inflammation. We'll also kind of bump into other topics that they also contribute to. So, let's scroll down and let's talk about the first one, complement. So, the complement system is a system by which um, little particles let's just say here's a bacteria these particles I'm, I'm just trying to give you the overview kind of the big picture and then we'll talk about the details but the complement system is just little molecules and they coat these molecules stick on this bacteria and that's a flag for destruction. So these little molecules through processes we're going to talk about stick on this bacteria and flag it for destruction and these complement system is in the blood. So let me just post this picture here and this picture will kind of explain about uh, we're going to talk about this picture and the pathways for the complement system. So the classic pathway is that, oh, I forgot to mention there's C1 through C9. So there's complement parts C1, C2, C3, da 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 da, da clear up to C9. And remember in the last videos we talked about C5 and C3 and these types of just kind of number C5A and C5B. We're going to talk about, explain a little bit more about those. But when you just see like a C and a number, that refers to the complement system. And there's nine particles, if you will, inside this complement system. And I know it's very original just to name them complement one molecule, complement two molecule. And so, and, uh, you know, and, and so forth. So, but in the classical pathway, is um, we have some kind of bacteria or some kind of microbe or um, some pathogen, some kind of invading um, object, and it gets inside, and we have an antibody that attaches to it. And the most common um, initiation of this complement system is through the complement three molecule. So in the process of this classical pathway, this molecule right here is complement one. This molecule is complement one molecule, and it binds with an antibody. And then this combination of events causes C3 to be converted to C3A or C3B. And then you can see in this picture here, so this, this process right here happens when one of these three pathways is initiated. This kind of kind of goes through right here. This step here it needs to be inserted in this picture here. 
So when this classical pathway from the C1 molecule binding with the antibody happens, then it converts C3 to C3A or C3B, and C3B gets deposited kind of a flag, if you will, jabbed into this, into this um, microbe or this bacteria or this pathogen or whatever. Now all these C1 through C9 um, complement proteins, they're all inactive when they're going through the body. So this is like, say, a bloodstream here, and all these are kind of floating through this bloodstream. Um, they're inactive, and then when this happens, then they start to become active. So this combination will then activate C3 to turn into C3A or C3B. And another pathway is this lectin pathway. So mannose that's floating in our blood, when it binds to um, lectin, you know, it will form this complex. And the lectin is floating around in our blood, and the mannose, which is a sugar, uh, I guess a lot of pathogens or microbes have mannose sugars kind of sticking out on them. So this lectin will bind to this um, this uh, mannose sugar here, and then um, it will con it will cause C3 to be converted into C3A or C3B, and C3B will be attached to um, this this bacteria here. And in this alternative pathway, um, you know, this microbe or this pathogen will be, will get into the bloodstream and so, some of the, these other plasma proteins will bind, they'll, they'll recognize um, some of the um, kind of these uh, proteins on this microbe and then they'll bind to it to make this complex which then will also convert C3 into C3A and C3B and C3B will be deposited onto this microbe kind of as a flag. So now once this happens there's several kind of effects that can happen. Um, let's talk about this bottom one. The formation of a membrane attack complex or a MAC. And so what this will happen is that these complement proteins, what they will do is they'll kind of form this pore. And you know, this is a hole. It's a hole here. So stuff can get in and stuff can get out. And what that will cause is that will disrupt this bacteria's internal environment through ions and, and different things. And because pretty much this complement is just punching a hole inside this membrane and then all this stuff can leak out and all this stuff can leak in and then the cell just lyses which just means it ruptures it kind of fragments into all these different pieces and so this bacteria is no longer existing and then your body will clean up these you know the garbage men you know will come in and, and clean up all this stuff and it will be as if the bacteria never happened. Another thing that will happen is this C3B molecule that's, that was flagged here, that was inserted on this bacteria, the phagocy phagocytes, um, you, you know, these, these cells that undergo phagocytosis, which is just, you know, engulfing this molecule here, have these receptors on, on them right here. And they recognize this C C3B complement system and so there will be like oh hey this guy's flagged we need a we need to destroy this guy so recognition of the bound C3B by phagocyte CB3 receptor is pretty much just what I explained and then the cell will create a pseudopod you know these arms if you will reach around it and kind of engulf this bacteria bring it inside and then you know little lysosomes like kind of what we talked about in previous videos these lysosomes will be injected inside this little bubble and it will just kind of destroy this bacteria so this process will kind of just happen inside the cell and the cell will kind of digest it and then on the final pathway this C3A also has important uh, concept so this enzyme let me switch colors here. So remember that we talked about 
right here, C3 converts, uh, gets converted into C3A or C3B, there's an enzyme right here. And this enzyme is C3 convertase, which I know is another original name, but it's very, it's very simple and it explains what's happening. This enzyme here, because it ends in an ACE, ACE refers to usually an enzyme, will convert C3 to C3A or C3B. C3B gets deposited into this bacteria and flags these cells for phagocytosis to engulf them and destroy them um, so they don't destroy you know, us or you know, the host, wherever they're um, trying to destroy or they get into their body. Um, another, so what happens is the C3 convertase, um, I'm just going to have to draw through the picture here. And I'm going to have to scroll down a little bit here. But this C3 convertase also forms, then, then it kind of um, attaches with some other molecules and forms a C5 convertase enzyme. And this C5 convertase, I bet you can guess what it does. It converts C5 to C5A and C5B. So now that we go up to this pathway, we have the C3A um, piece or chunk or, or molecule or whatever converted from this original C3 molecule, molecule. And in this process, let me just, this is kind of a little complicated, so I'm trying to explain it the best I can. This C5 um, convertase converts the complement C5 to C5A and C5B, and remember that these complement proteins are just floating around in our blood, all of them. So this process happens right here. So these two are linked together. That this C5 convertase converting C5 to C5A and C5B happens right here, so that you get C5A and C5-3 sorry, C5A and C53A. These little proteins here, if you will, that were converted by these two enzymes cause mast cells mast cells to release histamine. And if you've watched the previous videos, you remember that histamine is a vasoactive substance, which means it causes. This is a this is say this is a diameter of a normal blood vessel. Histamine causes this vasodilation, so more blood flow get into the area, and it also causes these little endothelial cells here to kind of spread apart by cell contraction, meaning the cells kind of shrink together, uh, and some other steps that cause more holes. More holes. So that leukocytes can get out of, of, the, of the tissue there. And also remember that, let me scroll over here a little bit more, and this C5A, so C5A also causes um, this arachidonic acid uh, lipooxygenase enzyme. Uh, if you if you don't remember, go back and watch the arachidonic acid video. But the C5 causes um, the arachidonic acid. Um, cycle to follow this lipooxygenase pathway and lipooxygenase is just a pathway and the main result the big picture is just uh, let me scroll over here a little bit more is you have increased leukocyte activity um, uh, more adhesion so if this is a blood vessel and the leukocytes here this is a leukocyte. The leukocytes are going to adhere better to the cell wall, and then they are going to diapodes out. They're going to come out, and then chemotaxis 
chemotaxis, they're going to be able to navigate through this extracellular matrix to find where they're supposed to go to fight the pathogen. Maybe it's over here. Maybe the pathogen is over here, or this microbe or um, bacteria or whatever. And then it will navigate to this and it will kind of start destroying it and, and fighting it, if you will. So C5A is also this complement system that will lead into the arachidonic acid um, cycle or pathway, if you will, down the lipooxygenase pathway. So the complement system is very involved and it's got its fingers in a lot of pies and they all kind of feed in each other. But this picture here I think does a great job and I got this picture out of the Robbins Basic Pathology textbook, 8th edition, Kumar is the author um, of these you know, complement proteins and how they can kind of lead into different pathways. And the major outcomes, if you will, of the complement pathways is forming this MAC complex, flagging microbes for phagocytosis, and causing um, inflammation increasing the inflammation response so that leukocytes are recruited, more leukocytes are recruited, and ultimately the leukocytes are going to um, uh, destroy the microbes and, and gobble them up and try to restore homeostasis, trying to restore the body to normal function so this bacteria doesn't wreak havoc in our bodies. So we will see you in the next video.